So use this plugin, it's pretty simple. The first thing you're gonna need is something to render and you can make it as simple as hitting the comma key, going into project or tool, double clicking any of these and then using that. What I'm gonna do is we're just gonna load up something that we've made previously. So here's a scarab and you can render from any view. So essentially what we're gonna do is just like we did and the compositing explanation is we're going to take this view. You can turn on perspective if you want to. We're going to hit uh, render and we're going to composite a bunch of cool stuff together. However, how we're going to do that is let's go ahead and dock RZ plugin menu. You're going to see these little double arrows here, these dividers. Again, if you double click those, that'll open up a little sidebar here. If you have a brush in here, a uh, brush menu, just take this white dot and click it. That'll get rid of it. And then you can take Z plug in, take that white dot and just pull it right over here. So we have our ZBrush compositor open over on this side. And you're gonna see we have a tool bag composite and a substance composite. We're gonna use both of these. They're both really, really cool. But instead of just rendering an image, we're actually gonna send this over to another program. Uh, in the first instance, we're gonna send it over to substance. And to reiterate, you don't need any UVs. It's literally just gonna take the rendered image and allow us to manipulate just that image. No UVs required. Now there are some things to keep in mind. If we go in here to polyframe, that's what's by uh, hitting shift F or clicking this button up here. And in fact, we don't even need to see the line. Just go ahead and turn line off. And I'm going to open up the tool subtool menu. If I go through and alt tap any of my subtools, just select them, you're going to see some of them are masked. So I can go through here and hold down control and drag and I can unmask them. In fact, if you go to Z plugin clean tool master, you're going to see there's a clear masks all. You can just click that button and then I'll clear the mask off of all of your subtools. If you don't have this, uh, just go back to the previous video and download and install the uh, Clean Tool Master. But when I click on this back here, you're gonna see we have polygroups uh, that I use for when I was creating this shell. If you want this just to be all one polygroup, just hit Control W, and that'll make it all one polygroup and it's gonna make it all one color. Now that's kind of important is because when we go in there and we create ID maps, it's gonna do it based on your polygroups. So if you want, again, every single one of your subtools to be all one polygroup, you can just go through here and hit Alt tap them and hit Control W and that'll make them all one polygroup. If it's easier, you can go up here to the very top, select that one, then just click this down arrow. And again, just keep hitting Control W to make those all one polygroup. And if you have it set up to where every single one of your subtools would be considered one material, you're in good shape. And in fact, here's another plugin you can use. There's Z repeat it. You can actually record yourself hitting Control W, which is polygroup, group mask, clear masks, and if there's no masks, as we already cleared them, it's just gonna polygroup whatever's visible. So you can record yourself doing that and then apply that to all of your subtools. But since we don't have that many, it went pretty fast. Now the next thing we're gonna to need to do is set our camera angle. So if you wanna do like a front three quarter render with our perspective on, and keep in mind you can go in here to your draw menu and set the focal length to whatever you'd like. Or if you wanna do more of a, a, more of a graphic render, like a UI, like render for a UI, or maybe a concept illustration. Uh, we can go in here, we can turn perspective, uh, we can keep it turn perspective off. We're just gonna kind of frame our object here. Now, if we go over here to ZBrush Compositor and say create substance composite, it's gonna tell us ideally the canvas size needs to be square and it'll crop the canvas for you, but it's better if you go in there and do it manually so you have complete control over how this is gonna turn out. Now, that's not to say every time you do a composite with ZBrush, you have to have a square image. Uh, later on, we're gonna get into the manual methods for creating this, but for a ZBrush compositor, it prefers a square image. No big deal, we can change that. How I have ZBrush set up right now is I have W size turned on and whenever I have, I usually have this docking divider open by default. So with everything open, if I go in here to document W size and click new document, it's gonna give me a new document that goes all the way border to border. I also, in my document menu, have the range turned down to zero. So instead of having that gradient, I have that turned down to zero. Now, so we can see this a little bit better. I'm gonna go in here to document, click back, and then click in my canvas. In fact, I can go right over here and just choose like maybe a lighter gray. Again, just so we can see our document a little bit easier. And what I mean by that, in fact, let's take our document menu and let's go ahead and drag that white dot over to the left so we can keep that open. So right under here, underneath document, we have uh, this pro, which is proportional. It's gonna constrain our proportions and our width and our height. Now, in order to make this square, I need to turn proportional off. And then in width and height, we need to give it a value. Now you may be thinking, okay, I wanna render this out to a 2048. So you may be thinking, okay, let's type in 2048 and 2048, hit enter and resize. 
go ahead and say, yes, I do want to resize the document. Go ahead and hit Control N to clear your canvas. Now, if you drag your object out now and go into edit mode and say, okay, I've got a square document here and now I can hit render, it'll let you. However, you're only seeing a very small portion of your document. If you want to see your entire document, take the zoom and pull out and now you can see here's the entire 2048 document. So if you want to fill this up, go ahead and use your navigation tools. And again, just using basic ZBrush navigation, tumbling, hold down shift to snap it to that top view and then kind of zoom it into place here. Or you can even just hit F to frame. So if you hit F to frame, it's going to frame the subtool and then F again, will frame your entire object and then you can just back that off just a bit. However, for ZBrush Compositor, you don't have to worry about the pixel size. It's going to render at whatever render size you want to. So we can even take this down to, say, 800 by 800. Hit Resize. Hit Control N. So this is actually the object here. I don't need to zoom out or anything. This is, you can see the entire document. In fact, if you click this actual button, that's going to show you the actual size. And you can see, we can see the entire document here. So 800 by 800 is perfectly fine. Uh, in ZBrush. We can go through here and again hit F to frame and then back that off just a little bit. And now we can send this over. Now there's also a possibility if you want to include ZBrush renders, Keyshot renders, Marmoset renders, Painter renders, really renders from any program and composite those all together in whatever image editing program you want. So just to play it safe, what I'm going to do is I want to save this camera view. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. One way you can do this is go in here to Movie, Timeline, show and you can actually set a keyframe just by clicking in there and then if you ever move the object or it gets out of whack just go through here and use your arrow keys or just tap that area in your timeline and it'll snap back however if you ever do want to say render out a zbrush which in in which case you'd you would have to go into document make it much larger this movie timeline is going to throw off your placement so generally speaking i'm not going to use that for doing composite images so let's go back in here to Movie, Timeline, Show to turn that off. What I would suggest you do is go in here to Document, Zap Link Properties, and you can store something in here. So you can just say Custom 1. That'll store a Zap Link view. So you can go through here and you can make changes to where your object is and then just click Custom 1. As well as if you go in here to your Draw menu, you're going to see you can uh, store cameras in here. Now in this case, since we don't have perspective turned on, it's not going to let us. It's going to say Draw, and then we're going to go down here to say store camera is going to say it has to be turned on. So, I mean, you can do it. You can turn on perspective, go in here to draw, take that focal length and just max it out. And that's essentially an orthographic view. And then you can go down here and you can say store camera. You can even name it, whatever you'd like. And then you can use this, the uh, selection menu here to select a camera from a list. Now, if you do this and you want to like close down ZBrush and come back, you're going to want to go up here to file, save as, to save a Z project so you can maintain those cameras. Uh, and as far as Zaplink, if you want to use that again, all you'll need to do is hit Save Views. It'll save out a view file, it's Scarab Views, that's fine. Just go ahead and hit Save. So if you ever load ZBrush back up and you make another square document, all you got to do is load up your Zaplink or load up your camera here, and you'll be good to go. And just to kind of demonstrate that, let's go back to our document here. Let's change our width to say width and height to 1024. Uh, in this case, now that I think about it, since it's already square, we can turn proportional on at this point and then type in 1000, hit enter. It'll go ahead and change my other value, hit resize, say yes, hit control N. Again, I can't quite see all my document, so I'm going to zoom this out just a bit. Go ahead and pull this out. And again, you know, I got to get this back into the original position I wanted. All I got to do is go in here and hit custom one or draw, click top ortho, and it'll snap it back into place. So as long as you maintain that square aspect ratio, the camera and Zaplink will both work.